ಸುಮ್ನೆ ಶೇರ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಇತ್ತು ಸರ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಬಾಟಮ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ನೌ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಸರ್ ಯಾ 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 ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ನೌ ಯಾ ಆ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ನೌ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆ ಯೋ ಎಂಟರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಓ ವಿಂಡೋ ಕ್ರೋಮ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಯಾ ಆ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಯಾ ಯಾ ಓಕೆ ದೆನ್ ಶೇರ್ ನೊ ಯೇ ನೊ 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 ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಶೇರ್ಸ್ ಆ ಚೇಂಜ್ Chrome tab or window, what do you call it? Yes, sir. Yes. Can you share, can you see the share, uh, you know, slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. It is visible, sir. And you can go for slideshow, sir, after that. Uh, stop. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. It's perfect, sir. okay can i start or can i wait for uh, sir uh, we will introduce uh, you to the uh, participants sir then uh, you can okay sir. okay 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 uh, respected resource person dr a ramis and uh, dear participants i welcome you all uh, to the day 5 of this uh, one week international faculty development program <laughs> with uh, social relevance organized by department of pc at dmr college <coughs> today uh, we have uh, dr a ramis uh, senior lecturer department of sociology southeastern university sri lanka he is going to talk on uh, social impact of covid 19 across south asia now i would like to uh, request uh, my one of the coordinators of this fdp uh, mrs ramis uh, Thank you, sir. Myself, uh, Sri Durga Kameshwari, Assistant Professor in EC Department. And I am very glad uh, for introducing today's resource person, Dr. A. Ramit, sir. Sir is working as Senior Lecturer in Department of Sociology in Southeastern University, Sri Lanka. he did his uh, post graduate diploma in peace preparedness and conflict resolution in 2019 from university of bradford uk and mphil in sociology in 2010 from department of sociology university of peradenia doc and doctor of philosophy in 2015 uh, from department of malay studies national university of singapore he presented various papers and uh, published various journals and presented his papers in uh, some famous conferences and mostly his works are related to sociology and peace building his paper titled negative effects on peace building due to mal distribution mal distribution of humanitarian assistance provided to the victims of tsunami by the ngos and government a case study of ampara district at the international symposium organized by sabargamba university of sri lanka in july 2006 has won gold medal for best presentation he also contributed a chapter on japan's peace building efforts in sri lanka consolidation of peace and national nation building on an edited book on post war reconstruction in sri lanka prospects and challenges published by kandy international center for ethics studies in 2010 he also wrote an article on demystification of jihad and islamic capitalism comparative analysis of max weber's thesis on protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism at the kalam volume 111 uh, journal of faculty of arts and culture we are very thankful to you sir for accepting our invitation and sparing your time and knowledge and sharing your knowledge to all our participants and we are uh, looking forward for your speech sir thank you 
Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, for the organizers uh, uh, of this uh, webinar session uh, and the workshop for inviting me uh, to um, uh, to uh, to the social, uh, you know, sociological and uh, uh, sessions today. Um, so I'm glad that I've been able to. Uh, I think I may be able to share some of my thoughts uh, in relations to social impact of COVID-19 on South Asian societies. Um, so let me share the outline of the presentation first. I will uh, first of all talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, which has affected not only uh, the South Asian society but uh, you know, but almost all the uh, you know almost all the entire world. And uh, I will also discuss about the COVID-19 and its impact on uh, on the global uh, arena, global world. And um, I will uh, discuss about the social impact of COVID-19 on South Asian societies. Um, before I move on to the conclusion part, I will discuss about the positive dimension of COVID-19 upon societies. Yeah. So um, bef uh, the first of all, yeah. First, uh, let me um, uh, let me share some of the uh, the historical background of uh, COVID nineteen pandemic in relation to global society. Uh, the novel COVID nineteen um, uh, pandemic, you know, pa uh, first identified in Wuhan in December two thousand nineteen. Then the WHO World Health Organization declared it as a global pandemic on 11th March 2020. Um, and according to WHO, mortality rate of COVID-19 is lower than that of SARS and MERS. However, the infection rate of COVID-19 is double than the SARS and five times higher than the seasonal other seasonal flu. So uh, what you can infer from this uh, fact is that the infection rate Transmission rates of uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID is so fast. And uh, the government across the world have resorted to various means, uh, including um, movement restriction, nationwide curfews, travel ban, uh, you know, and the border closures to tackle the pandemic. Um, so, uh, so it has been considered not only as a health hazard, health issue, the COVID-19 pandemic, but as a social, economic uh, uh, economic uh, issues as well, because of the effect that it has caused upon, uh, you know, a society on uh, uh, various dimensions. Um, and because its effects rises steadily of an unprecedented propo proportion, so almost 16.4 uh, million cases have been uh, reported with almost 700,000 deaths um, up to uh, 29th of this month. So if you look at the statistic, if you look at some of the statistic of uh, various countries, including Sri Lanka, uh, in Sri Lanka, 2,782 cases have been reported and uh, 11 deaths and 2,121 recoveries, uh, 130 people, uh, you know, uh, you know, people have uh, been reported out of 1 million populations and uh, 7,146 7, uh, tests have been done per day, uh, per million actually, out of 21 million people. So if you compare the statistic with the United States of America, uh, it is almost, uh, I think, uh, Beyond uh, four million, four million uh, cases have been uh, you know, reported, and 149,849 uh, people have uh, so far died. And uh, daily, they they uh, test 163,736 uh, uh, you know test per million people. So their population is three three hundred thirty million in the total well but uh, in comparison in india um, india has uh, reported 1. Point, uh, you know 1.4 million people billion million cases uh, more than 
four million cases, and thirty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-six people have uh, died out of COVID so far, and uh, they have uh, they are testing twelve thousand one hundred seventy one hundred seventy-one cases per day uh, out of one million people. So. Um, so in comparison with, uh, with both these countries, one is developed country, another one is uh, a geopolitical uh, uh, power in the South Asian region, Sri Lanka is far more better uh, in terms of the effects of COVID-19. So as I come from Sri Lanka, I could share with you all uh, about the COVID-19 pandemic in Sri Lanka. Uh, the first case of COVID-19 was detected in 27th January and the uh, case was uh, treated at IDH, a hospital in Colombo. Uh, and the first case of local uh, uh, tourist guy was detected directed in um, uh, in February. At the ta and uh, the the government uh, appointed task force under military and health authorities uh, to fight against COVID-19. And the task force was headed by a military person called uh, Major General Savender Silva. So it was a very powerful task force which dealt extensively uh, to, to, uh, you know, to, um, uh, to control or contain the transmission of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And the government declared lockdown, a curfew across the, uh, across the, uh, across the country on March 19. And um, as a result of that, uh, all the schools and uh, universities were closed down by uh, March 13th, actually. And now the lockdown has been relaxed. Uh, the government established 45 quarantine centers um, uh, in various places. And uh, most of the quarantine centers were headed by army personnel and uh, were handled by army personnel. Military, uh, military was uh, <coughs> given responsibility of local given responsibilities of looking after the people were, who were, uh, you know, um, uh, who were, uh, you know, taken to quarantine centers. So life of all people comes to, uh, you know, had come to a grinding hole uh, and the economy was massively hit. Uh, economy was massively hit not only in Sri Lanka, but across the world. And the Sri Lanka, uh, I would tell you, uh, Sri Lanka has been ranked ninth best country in the world for its successful containment, immediate response on tackling the uh, coronavirus. So uh, let me discuss with you some of the social impact of COVID-19 on South Asian society. First of all, uh, it has had a, a massive impact on social capital and interactions. When it comes to uh, social, social capital, we can define social capital in sociological jargon, sociological parlance, that it is <clears throat> a form of social network, relationship, um, and so on and so forth. So it has been uh, rapidly and extensively been affected by the COVID-19. Uh, social distancing is a challenge to the core of social cohesion. So there has been an effect on, so, uh, you know, uh, on social cohesion as a result of COVID-19. Um, people, including migrants, maintain their relations virtually. So uh, people who are working in abroad were able to <clears throat> conduct them virtually. Uh, they were not in a position to you know, come back to the country as a result of the closure uh, of uh, airports. Um, and uh, they uh, perhaps if they were to come to the country, they had to go for or a quarantine centers 14 days or 21 days of quarantine. Um, apart from primary relationships, secondary relations outside the world uh, with peers, colleagues, uh, 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 we, which were affected, you know, the, you know uh, maintaining network, maintaining relationship with peers and colleagues uh, was also uh, badly affected. And uh, as a result of that, the family network and community network uh, had come to a grinding hold, actually. So, as I told you before, um, almost all the universities and schools were closed uh, as a result of COVID-19. Uh, maybe, uh, I think, uh, most of the universities and uh, schools were closed in the middle of uh, March, 
the schools and universities is closed from uh, in, in the in the in the uh, in the European world. The schools and universities closed from February February itself. But in the developing countries like India and Sri Lanka, almost all the schools and the universities was closed uh, in the middle of March. And we had we have had number of social problems emanating. Uh, erupting uh, uh, by the COVID-19 uh, due to the stringent lockdown imposed by the government like Sri Lanka and uh, India, uh, domestic violence shot up uh, and intra-inter-family dispute shot up. Uh, child abuse, I think uh, in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, the Child uh, Protection Authority received complaints of uh, you know, 40 persons of complaint uh, they have received uh, to their hotline 1929, uh, you know, uh, hotline numbers. Uh, they received 40 persons of complaints in relation to child abuse cases during this lockdown period. And poverty, as uh, poverty and alcoholism were on the rise. As I discussed with you a little bit on the economic impact of COVID-19, I need to tell you that the lockdown, stringent measures in terms of lockdown, uh, affected uh, people economically. Uh, people found it very difficult to come to terms with, uh, with their daily income. Uh, most of them were unemployed, and their social monetary uh, were abruptly stopped. Uh, and uh, NGOs and charity organizations teased the operations during this, uh, you know, COVID, uh, you know, lockdown period. Period. Um, and most of the religious centers, uh, most of the religious centers were teased to operate, and uh, they were asked to, you know, cease the operations during this COVID nineteen, in order to maintain, uh, uh, you know, in order to ensure the social distancing is. Uh, uh, preserve and uh, you know in order to uh, uh, prevent the people congregating themselves in religious centers so almost all the religious centers were uh, you know uh, were closed down so therefore people uh, started uh, in the sense uh, stop their religious prayer, play, uh, prayers in the relig uh, religious centers and uh, covid-19 uh, pandemic had have you know has had an impact on sports and leisure um, uh, so, as a result of lockdowns and stringent measures, uh, there are sporting events and the leisure activities uh, were abruptly stopped. The people were, in a sense, people found it very difficult to go outside of their houses for their sports, a gym, or any other picnics or trips. They uh, <clears throat> couldn't do any partying, adventurism, and so on and so forth. So, uh, there's a lot of uh, psychosocial impact upon people. Uh, you know, people uh, were suffering psychologically. Um, most of the people were suffering from stress, uh, depression, and um, some of them, uh, some of them experienced, uh, you know, in the sense, uh, some of them sensed the suicidal uh, attempts or suicidal, uh, you know, uh, intention as well. Uh, in India, suicide cases reported uh, due to the pressure to learn via online. So this is an uh, this I think this is this was a news in uh, Kerala or somewhere in India. Uh, and the social media and uh, it had had an impact on uh, the social media, but you know social media played a positive role during uh, during. Uh, this COVID-19 period. And um, as I uh, discussed earlier, this COVID-19 has had an impact on cultural and personal events. Most of the marriage functions, uh, you know, most of the marriage functions were uh, not held. And, uh, you know, weddings and marriage functions and, uh, uh, you know, funerals, large gatherings. And all these uh, things, you know, even the funeral couldn't be conducted uh, with uh, more number of participation. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> and at the same time, that is uh, uh, ethnic minority dimensions uh, as a result of COVID-19 as well. 
most of the mineral groups in across uh, some of the countries in South Asia, you know, they bore the brand of stigma, victimization, discrimination. Uh, they experience xenophobic treatment and racial profiling as well. There are a number of instances, there are a number of examples that can be cited to this, uh, uh, you know, discrim discrimination or victimization uh, issues, um, not only in India, but in Sri Lanka as well. And uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic ha has had uh, an impact on vulnerable groups like daily workers, differently able people, elderly people, and migrant people. So this was uh, uh, news in India, the migrant, uh, the, uh, the movements of migrant, migrant people uh, in, uh, in different states, because uh, as a result of the stringent lockdown enforced by certain states and the central government, people uh, found it very difficult to move to their original place, places. And, uh, and the transportation facilities was not provided by states. So uh, those who were working in different fac uh, factories in different states found it very difficult to go outside their centers, outside of their factories or their, you know, their places. Um, uh, so reunion with their families was, uh, was not, you know, uh, forthcoming for them. So uh, they started walking towards their places. They, uh, they found it very difficult during the lockdown period. Uh, the, the, uh, I'm talking about the migrant people. In, uh, so it, this was a news, uh, very famous, uh, you know, uh, news in India. For in the, it was a news in the public domain as well. So when it comes to looking at the positive dimension of COVID-19 upon South Asian societies, I would say that Social distancing promotes a disciplined society. People started making queues in almost all the places like, you know, banks, ATM, before the ATM machines, markets and other places. However, it is not um, uh, unsustainable. Uh, it is not sustainable, sorry. Um, uh, it is uh, uh, they are the, the, the social distancing, the phenomenon of social distancing is not to be seen in Sri Lanka these days. So um, as a result of uh, the overseeing uh, or the supervisions by uh, military personnel and police in order to mention, in order to ensure the distancing, social distancing, people were able to maintain that discipline uh, during uh, the lockdown period or the uh, relaxing, rela during the relaxation of lockdown period. But nowadays people are not adhering uh, not adhering to that uh, phenomenon of social distancing. So, uh, however, this has to be seen as a positive dimension uh, of uh, COVID-19. And uh, people started, uh, you know, uh, adapting personal hygiene practices uh, in their day-to-day -day life. And uh, they started wearing mos uh, masks, actually, to promote uh, a healthier society. So even before I come to the university, I make sure I, whether I uh, take my, uh, uh, you know, mask or not, because it, it has become an essential, um, essential item uh, in day-to-day -day life for us. So um, we ensure that we maintain hygiene practices uh, in uh, uh, daily, uh, in every minute or daily, actually. And uh, we continuously wear masks when it comes to having a discussion with other colleagues. I mean, it comes to, uh, you know, uh, getting together for a meeting or uh, interacting with people. So this is a positive dimension that needs to be looked at. Uh, as, uh, and um, crisis uh, gave rise to philanthropy. People, uh, as a result of people suffering from uh, poverty, uh, you know, unemployment, they um, lack money, they lack income. So uh, people with uh, philanthropic uh, uh, ideas started uh, going, uh, uh, you know, going towards them and helping them out uh, in terms of financial uh, financial uh, assistance. So uh, this has given rise to philanthropic uh, attitudes among the people. So those who were financially rich were able to help uh, the people who were living out of uh, living in the poverty line. Uh, 
you know uh, that that uh, that is a positive dimension that we need to look at and uh, the crisis the covid-19 create an invention in innovations including online education so as a result of crisis as a result of this unproportionate unproportionate uh, event um, people uh, you know the the learned guys and uh, uh, you know technically savvy people started uh, making a uh, lot of innovations including uh, you know a uh, lot of uh, you know robotic items you know in the university convocations robotic robotic were made made use uh, for the university convocation and uh, uh, you know uh, in sri lanka online education was not popular before covid-19 uh, even though it was very popular in the developed world in, in, in india as well but uh, covid-19 force almost all the universities and schools to adopt online education as a measure as a as a as a as a supplementary to their education uh, to re, you know to to recompensate the period that they are spending they are the, the students are spending at home so um, we as university academics and administrators have been spending a lot of time these days on uh, online education we have been doing that practice for the students via online so the in, even though our universities have uh, you know physically started um, no not a single students has been uh, taken to the university so far so we have been continuing the online educations for for the past 4 uh, to 5 months actually in sri lanka and uh, there has been a exponential growth of population Uh, as a result of lockdown some people are staying at homes so they are uh, so it uh, there is an assumption that uh, the population could uh, could be exponentially uh, grow in times to come as a result of the covid-19 so and um, intra family bonds have also been ramped up during this crisis so people uh, husband and wife the children got together and lit, uh, did a lot of works at home and uh, uh, before covid-19 they had hard time so they had little time to get together uh, at homes however uh, this situations forced them to get together and do a lot of work so uh, intra family bonds have uh, exponentially um, uh, increased as a result of this uh, lockdown so in conclusions i would say that Uh, covid-19 is a blessing in disguise for some while it's a curse for many however uh, it's a health crisis of unprecedented proportions uh, this is something that uh, uh, that needs to be taken very seriously and um, all the sociological issues are candid and warrant a serious concern and solutions and of course it warrants us to re strategize our economic economy towards self reliant or self sufficient we have to move towards self sufficient economy uh, and everybody is talking about uh, self sufficient economy uh, these days in uh, in the context of you know globalization has miserably failed and uh, people are talking about curtailing curtailing the imports uh, and uh, Ex, you know increasing the exports actually exports of high quality product um so uh, so far in sri lanka sri lankan government has uh, banned uh, import items of uh, luxurious import items like cars uh, other technological uh, equipments and so on and so forth except the oil except the uh, uh, medical items and health items you know Uh, medical items actually um and uh, massive investment must be made uh, in sectors like agriculture industry health education and future uh, so taking into considerations of the adverse effects that the covid-19 has had on these uh, sectors i think all almost all the countries will have to focus upon revamping uh the agriculture and uh, sectors like agriculture industry health and education uh, for the benefit of people for the benefit of their people in future
uh, and uh, it is uh, indispensable that we have to live with the virus for some time until a vaccine uh, is uh, is uh, found uh, i think there are many attempts made by you know many uh, uh, countries in the world to find vaccines to this uh, covid-19 so i think in uh, in 2021 we may be able to find a vaccine for this uh, coronavirus until that we may have to live with uh, we may have to live amidst this um, corona covid-19 virus yeah i think that's the end of my presentation thank you so much sir yeah sir thank you sir for your wonderful presentation and uh, yes. which is the need of the hour. You have yeah. uh, very precisely uh, given focus on uh, COVID-19 situation. Yeah. Sir, uh, we have a question from one of the participants. Yes. Uh, the question is like this. In uh, uh, mountain areas or in rural areas, that means in mm. remote areas, uh, mm. where uh, there is no reach, there is no mm. COVID-19 awareness. Mm. So how we can uh, develop this and what are the measures can be taken? Uh, um, uh, the people are not aware of the impact of COVID-19 transmission or COVID-19, uh, particularly in the rural areas, actually, because uh, rural areas, uh, are the you know, the people are living in congested, uh, in a congested way in rural areas. So uh, if a transmission uh, is ta uh, taken place in rural areas, uh, it can be dangerous. It can be very, uh, uh, very deleterious, I suppose, in the in the rural area. So uh, it is it is a responsibility of the uh, local government authorities and other Pradesia uh, Lekums, what do you call it, this district uh, uh, divisional secretary, to make sure that the people uh, living in rural areas are taken care of and they are given enough uh, and adequate. Uh, awareness on the uh, COVID-19 and the health protocol, they have to be uh, made aware of the health protocol, health guidelines uh, by the uh, local government authorities and division secretaries because uh, maintaining social distancing is a norm these days. Um, and uh, wearing, mask, wearing mask actually, uh, maintaining social distancing, maintaining health hygiene, um, you know, uh, uh, all these things have become a necessity these days. So it is very important. It is very essential on the part of the local government authorities, you know, the uh, law enforcement authorities like police and other forces. Uh, you know, in, in Sri Lanka, we have, uh, 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 you know, uh, RDHS, uh, District Health Medical Authorities, are making sure are the people who are making sure that uh, people across the board, not only in the urban areas, but in rural areas, are given um, adequate knowledge on the impact of uh, COVID-19. So uh, I think uh, maybe in India, there are agencies that are looking after all these things on the part of uh, rural as well as urban areas, people uh, living in the rural and urban areas. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So we have another question. This is from mm. Mr. Subrat Kumar. Can mm. we consider self-empowerment -emp in small-scale mm. industries will help for economical development? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, self-employment, uh, self, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, 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 self-employment uh, uh, is uh, is an arena. A sphere which should be accelerated, uh, expedited by the government, and uh, I think uh, in, uh, even India, India as well as Sri Lanka have taken various measures to help those people who are doing, uh, who are engaged in uh, self-employment ventures. So they need to be resuscitated in order to revive our economy uh, that has already been uh, paralyzed uh, as a result of COVID-19. So. Uh, these are the people who are taking care of our economy. So uh, 
people who are engaged in self employment opportunities will have to be you know looked after by the governments financially and uh, i think all the you know sri lanka and india um, the government of sri lanka and india have given enough instructions uh, to banks to help them out uh, to help the uh, those people help those people who are engaged in self employment to 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 uh, revive uh, their economic ventures yeah thank you thank you sir yeah. uh, there is another question from uh, mr ramesh marella hmm. in rural area especially farmers are not affected uh, is there any specific reason sir farmers are not affected uh farmers are not in fact not in, in not in terms of their cultivation but in terms of marketing they find it very difficult to do their marketing and uh, you know for for instance they cannot uh, as a result of lockdown or curfew enforced by states and gov central government um the uh, rural uh, people who uh, engaged in uh, rural agriculture in uh, rural agriculture found it very difficult to market their product like fruits and uh, agricultural product to other areas uh, uh, no transportations no uh, uh, people are there uh, people are not there in the market to buy their product so uh, and, uh, no entrepreneurs are coming forward uh, no uh, business people are not coming forward to buy their product so uh, they have hard times to market their product but in terms of cultivation they have little uh, i think little difficulty a little uh, difficulty to do their cultivation but they are um, you know they are you know in, or, in order to sell their product they found it very difficult yeah thank you sir thank you sir yeah uh, a question from sunanda reddy what hmm. are the parameters of covid kits how precise and accurate the results the kits produce kits yes you covid covid kits yes, uh is it in terms of importation so importing the kits no not about importing the kits uh, uh -huh. about their results covid uh, kit results uh how you mean results are you mean the testing yes testing sir covid yes. kits testing kits Oh, okay so uh, um, um, governments of uh, various countries uh, do the testing uh, do the testing based on their capacity of kits uh, for instance uh, you know the united arab emirates and the united states of america uh, do a testing of covid-19 um, in the you know uh, beyond the number of 100000 per day out of uh, 1 million uh, however country like sri lanka you know test test only uh, 2000 uh, 3000 per, per day and 12000 uh, you know 12000 per day in india so it it depends upon their capacity it depends upon their availability of kits uh, and the other instruments uh, for the people so um, so it it uh, so it depends upon the um, kits availability and the capacity of uh, you know kits uh, other medical items uh, to test the people yeah hello sir thank you very much sir yeah uh, all the questions uh, came from participants sir yeah i once again uh, thank you for uh, accepting our uh, invitation and uh, sh sharing your valuable uh, time sparing your valuable time and yeah. sharing your uh, knowledge uh, with all our participants uh, oh. as well as enlightened our uh, gmr itians also yeah once again on behalf yeah. of the management and uh, department of uh, ec i yeah. thank you sir uh, for yeah. uh, gracing this occasion and sharing your knowledge sir thank, thank you, you thank you thank you very much for this great opportunity for me yeah thank you thank you yeah. thank you sir signing off sir